Ow. Burp. <laughs> oh, all right, SpongeBob. Let's get back to subtracting. Oh boy, I'm so excited. What do you remember? <gasps> I remember that subtraction is the opposite of addition. Really? Yeah, yeah. So when I have to subtract something from 10, then I just think of all the ways I could split up 10. Hmm. Ways like what, SpongeBob? Oh, oh, like this. See? 1 and 9 makes 10. Whoa! Where did those come from? Ah, I've set up my Moyo beads to respond to everything you say today. So, when you say the numbers, they'll appear over here. <gasps> wow, like magic? Um, well, it's, it's actually science. Uh, what science? Mm, basically, magic, but with numbers. <laughs> oh, boy! So, are there any other ways we can split up 10, SpongeBob? Oh, well, sure, like this. We can also do two and eight. Oh, wow, that's really cool. Keep going, SpongeBob. Oh, okay. We can also do three and seven. Excellent. What else? We can also do four plus six. Are there any more? Yeah! Here is five plus five. Are there any other ways we can break up ten, SpongeBob? Um, well, not really. Well, what if you take one more off the stack and put it on the other stack? Well, if I do that, then I have six and four, but I don't really need to do that, Mr. T'Challa. Oh, really? And why is that, SpongeBob? Well, because I already knew that six and four together made ten. Excellent, SpongeBob. That's exactly right. So, tell me, if this is addition, how does this help us with subtraction? Oh, oh, because you use these number pairs, like four and six, or <laughs> three and seven, or two and eight, or one and nine. Oh, I did forget one, Mr. T'Challa. Really? What did you forget? Well, watch this. You can also split it up into ten and zero. Perfect, SpongeBob. Now, let me see how knowing that ten plus zero makes ten is going to help you subtract. <laughs> no problem, Mr. T'Challa. See? If we take 10 away, it's going to equal 0. 10 away from what, SpongeBob? Oh, well, you only taught me to do it if it starts with 10. So that's all I know how to do. Good. Well, let's start there. Show me all the ways I can subtract from 10. <laughs> sure. We just use our number pairs. 10 minus 10 is 0, which also means if we switch them... Wow, this science magic sure is cool. Um, thank you, SpongeBob, but it, it's really just called science. Okay, well, if we switch them, then 10 minus 0 is also 10. So I just remember that 0 and 10 are pairs. And if you subtract 1 from 10, you'll get the other. 
Show me more. Okay, 10 minus 1 equals 9. 10 minus 1 equals 9. And I can switch them and say 10 minus 9 equals 1 because 9 and 1 make 10. <laughs> Great, keep going. Okay, I can also say 10 minus 8 is 2. Or if I switch them, 10 minus 2 is 8. Again, excellent. Continue. 10 minus 3 is 7. Or if I switch them, 10 minus 7 is 3. Nah! <laughs> Good SpongeBob. I can also say 10 minus 6 is 4. Or if I switch them, 10 minus 4 is 6. I think there's one more you could tell me. Oh, yeah, yeah. 10 minus 5 is 5. Or if you switch... Well, you can't really switch them. It'd be the same. Good. Very good. Now, I told you I'd help you if the number we start with is not 10. You did promise that. I'm so excited. Which number should we start with first? Well, let's start with something simple. Like one. <gasps> one. It's such a little number. Look. Here's one right here. Good, SpongeBob. Now, if I start with one... Can I subtract numbers bigger than one? No, that wouldn't make any sense. Because when I give you one, then there's nothing left to give away. Actually, SpongeBob, someday I'll make math videos with negative numbers, and it will be gloriously evil. <laughs> um, Mr. Microbe? What? Negative numbers are not evil at all. They can be quite useful. <gasps> oh, does that mean I won't get to make a video? Oh, well, we might let you make a video. It just won't be evil. All right. Enjoy your Krabby Patties, SpongeBob. <laughs> well, that sounded ominous. <laughs> but for now... We just need to worry about how to split one into groups. And you already figured out the only way to split one into a group. It's going to be zero and one. That's right. So one minus zero is one. And if I switch them, one minus one is zero. Excellent, SpongeBob. Now, let's try another number, like, like two? Hmm, let's even go past two. <gasps> three. Yes, SpongeBob. What are all the ways we could split up three? <gasps> Let me show you. Okay. Three can be three and zero. Wait, 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 SpongeBob. We haven't talked about how this will be a subtraction problem. Oh, oh, right. If we start with three, then we know that we're going to have three in the very beginning of our subtraction problem. Just like that. And the first way I can split it up is three minus zero. And that's going to equal three. How did you know that would equal 3, Spongebob? Because if you want 3 at the end, you can start with 0 in this pile and 3 in this pile. And that will give you 3. 
Good. Okay, how else could we split this up? Well, if you had three minus one, that would give you two. And if I reverse it, then three minus two is one. Good. Let's try an even higher number, like six. <gasps> okay. So, if we start with six, we can always subtract zero, and then we'll still have six. Wonderful, SpongeBob. And what if I subtract six? Well, it's still grouped the same. So if you do 6 minus 6, you'll have 0. Now, show me all the ways I can split up 6. Oh, okay. First, you can do 5 and 1. So 6 minus 5 is 1, and... 6 minus 1 is 5. Excellent, SpongeBob. Or... 6 can do 4 and 2. So, 6 minus 2 is 4, and 6 minus 4 is 2. Good. There's one more. Oh, yeah, yeah. I can also split 6 into 3 and 3. So 6 minus 3 is 3. Very good, SpongeBob. You are a subtracting champion. Oh, thank you. And does this trick always work? Where I look at the first number and see how many different ways it can be split apart? Well, I think so, because we did it with 10 and 1, and 3, and 6, so we could probably do it with any number. Really? Okay. Well, then what I need you to do, SpongeBob, is think of all the ways that you can split up the number 89. <gasps> 89? <gasps> SpongeBob. No, no, SpongeBob, SpongeBob. It's okay. When we deal with big numbers, we don't have to think of all the ways they're broken up into pairs. We don't? No. There's another trick for subtraction. Oh, goodness gracious. This is amazing. I was so worried I'd have to split up eighty. Oh, SpongeBob. Oh, stay with me. Now, the trick to this other way to subtract is to use your fingers. Oh, but Mr. T'Challa, I don't have any. I don't either, SpongeBob. But thankfully, while you were passed out, I went exploring around the area and found some. <gasps> Fingers! Wow, they're so strange. Well, they may be SpongeBob, but they'll help us and everyone who has fingers watching to subtract. Oh boy, tell me how it works, Mr. T'Challa. Sure. First, we just have to think what we want to subtract from 89. Oh, can we start with something small? Sure, SpongeBob. Let's do 89 minus 3. Okay, so I just hold up 89 fingers. No, SpongeBob. Humans only have 10 fingers. That seems like a lot. Well, they find a way to manage. Okay, but I don't get it. How can we start with 89 if we only have 10 fingers? Ah, the number 89 is in your mind. Wow. 
we use fingers for the number three. <gasps> so we're going to need three fingers? That's right. Can you get three fingers ready on these hands? Um, it might take me a minute. Let me try. Okay, I need three fingers. Okay. One, two, three. How's that, Mr. T'Challa? Excellent, SpongeBob. Now, if we start with 89, all we have to do to subtract three is count backwards once for each of these fingers. <gasps> Counting backwards? We haven't even done a lesson about that, Mr. T'Challa. Well, that's true, but maybe someday we will. Nah, nah, it sounds exciting. For now, you'll just have to try your best, SpongeBob. Okay, well, if I were trying to count to get to 89, I would have gone 81, 82, 83, 84, 85, 86, 87, 88, 89. <gasps> so to go backwards, I just go 88, 87, 86. Yes, SpongeBob. 89 minus 3 is 86. Wow. So even when we start with really big numbers, the finger trick can help us subtract? It certainly can, SpongeBob. In fact, we could subtract 89 minus 4. How would we do it? <gasps> well, first, we need to think about the number 89 and then hold up four fingers. That's right, SpongeBob. Oh, I'm in charge of fingers. One, two, three, four. Good, SpongeBob. Now we start. Oh, we start at 89. And we? And we count backwards four. Uh, so before 89, it goes 88, 87, 86, 85. Yes, SpongeBob. 89 minus 4 is 85. And in fact, even if this weren't a big number, 9 minus 4, you can still use the finger trick. Oh, because 9 counting backwards would be 8, 7, 6, 5. 9 minus 4 is 5. That's right, SpongeBob. <gasps> and this trick works with any number? Well, you have to have enough fingers for it. So, so we could do 89 minus 7? We can sure try, SpongeBob. How many fingers will you need to do 89 minus 7? <gasps> Um, let me think. Oh, I just need seven fingers, because I keep the first number in my brain. Good. Now get seven fingers ready. Oh, I only have five on this hand. So I'll need a whole nother hand. Okay, Mr. T'Challa, seven fingers. Excellent, SpongeBob. So... We'll start at 89, and we'll count backwards 7. Okay, um, 89, 88, 87, 86, 85, 84, 83, 82! Excellent, SpongeBob. You understand how the finger trick works. <laughs> Yay! And I can use it when I'm subtracting numbers like 1 or 2 or 3 or 4 or 5 or 6 or 7 or 8 or 9 or 10 as long as I have that many fingers. You could, SpongeBob, but I do have a secret to tell you. <gasps> a secret? Ooh, tell me, tell me, tell me, tell me. The secret is, SpongeBob, that when we're subtracting eights and nines, there's something that's even sneakier than the finger method. <gasps> sneakier? That's right, SpongeBob. Are you ready to be sneaky? <gasps> Let me show you. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready.